Hello, everyone, and welcome to this afternoon's um, theater showcase session. We are excited to be here today um, to talk. Can I go back one slide? Sorry, there we go. Um, to talk to you all about using AI to enable America's innovation agency. Um, I'm Anna Hoffman, and uh, with me here today, I have John and Ian, and we are um, really looking forward to talking about our journey here today. But first, we wanted to ask you all a couple questions to get you all involved. So would you mind raising your hands if you have used an iPhone today? Or maybe a Pixel, since we're at a Google conference. <laughs> um, have any of you played the slots while you've been here in Vegas? Any gamblers? <laughs> no? A couple? I see a couple. Awesome. And then do you all know that uh, all of your moves at the casino are tracked by a fraud detection system? Yes? So does anyone know what all three things have in common? No? All right, well, they all have patents, and not just regular patents. Well, I guess they're regular patents, but they are US patents. And the United States Patent and Trademark Office is, um, has the mission to foster American innovation by, uh, oh my goodness, by protecting uh, inventors and uh, business owners and the American citizens. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. There we go. Um, so today we'll take you on our journey from how an idea or a patent application uh, gets examined and ultimately adjudicated. We'll talk through the challenges that patent examiners face in their day-to-day -day, uh, with an ever-growing docket of patent applications, the uh, vision and the journey that we went on to explore AI solutions, and of course, the technology, um, the Google Cloud and AI models that power the solutions today. But first, let me introduce the speakers here in front of you. Um, as I mentioned, I'm Anna Hoffman with Accenture. Um, I have been supporting the federal government for the last 15 years, driving um, tactical and strategic programs, and specifically this patent search AI effort for the last three years. And with me here today, John and Ian, um, I will let you all introduce yourselves. All right, hi everyone, Ian Weatherby. Um, I've been at Google for 10 years now as a software engineer. Uh, my team at Google runs Google Patent Search. We've done some public data sets on BigQuery. Uh, and for the last maybe four or five years, we've been working on building these AI search models for the USPTO. And my name is Jonathan Horner. I work at the United States Patent and Trademark Office, and I build tools, specifically AI tools for patent examiners and the public. I have a unique perspective on this because I was a patent examiner for about a decade, and I know the challenges that they face every day. Next slide. All right, so what's the problem we're facing? Well, Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution, yes, we're very proud we're that early, uh, gives Congress the power to give somebody protection over their invention for a limited period of time. So what does this mean? Well, this means that somebody is entitled to an invention, a patent on their invention, unless it's been done before, or it's an obvious variant of something that's been done before. Now, it's actually much more complicated than that, but we're going to focus on the part of this that deals with patent search. So how do we, what do we mean when we say patent search? Well, an examiner has to go through all of human knowledge, from generative AI all the way back to the wheel, to figure out has this invention or this application for a patent been done before. That's a lot of information to go through. That means they have to look through YouTube videos, uh, uh, YouTube videos, speeches like this one, research papers, and uh, even patents themselves. So let's focus on patents themselves. Even within that corpus, there's well over 100 million documents. And that's a lot to go through in the limited amount of time an examiner has to look through things. So we need to do something and give them tools to be able to go through the ever-increasing amount of information. A lot of people say it's like looking for a needle in a haystack when you're doing a search. It's a lot more akin to looking for a needle in a stack of other needles. That's how difficult it is. Moreover, you're actually looking for something that may or may not exist. Most people, when they do a search, are looking for something that is hopefully there. In this case, the examiner is looking for something that might not be there. In fact, the applicant hopes it's not there so that they get their patent. So in the past, examiners have used Boolean search techniques, search techniques that we all know and love where you're anding and oring terms together to be able to determine, bring back documents, and then determine if something is patentable. 
Well, due to the exponential increase in information out there, those tools are becoming less and less sufficient to maintain the quality that we require for a U.S. patent. This is where AI comes in. So uh, we use AI tools, and those AI tools are in production today with examiners, and they are even explainable AI tools because we do have a duty to the examiners or to the public and the applicant to show how we got to the decision that the examiner made. So how did we get there? Well, Anne's going to talk a little bit about that. Thanks, John. Um, so our journey with Patent Search AI started in 2019 BC, or before COVID, actually just a couple months before COVID. Um, and we started with a small prototype, really just trying to prove out that artificial intelligence or emerging technology could be used to solve some of these challenges that John talked about. Uh, we conducted dozens of interviews with patent examiners, co-creation workshops, um, deployed a modern Google infrastructure backend, and launched a fully functional prototype in an unprecedented three months. This prototype was rolled out to approximately 200 examiners, um, and after an initial training and usage period, the results showed that examiners were able to find a significant amount of prior art that they wouldn't have otherwise been able to find. So with these results, we continued to prototype while we got greenlit for our first um, uh, production feature to be deployed directly into the search system. Uh, this feature was called More Like This Document, and it simply allows examiners to find documents that are uh, similar to the document they're currently looking at um, using AI. Uh, they're typically used to using Boolean search, so AI is the, the novel concept for them. This feature became used by examiners immediately, which then allowed us to um, run with a much bigger, more robust AI user interface directly in the, or in the examiner search system. This one was called Similarity Search, and it allows examiners to upload a patent application, either a published or unpublished application, for the first time into the examiner search system. Um, it also um, retrieves then results and ranks the results based on the text and the classification codes of the patent application content and allows examiners to even further refine and re-rank their results based on text in the application that they can emphasize. Um, additionally, John mentioned a little bit about the importance of explainability, um, but the result sets provides Google, um, snippets very similar to how you're used to seeing them in um, a Google search that has explain, it explains to you why the results are relevant. So little text um, snippets within there. Um, since Similarity Search went live, we've continued to uh, uh, add new features and functionality into the system, including um, AI within Boolean search and synonyms. So that enables examiners to write more robust search queries. And I think now we're going to move over to Ian to talk about the tech that has made this all possible. All right, great. Thanks, Anna. Um, so at the very beginning of this journey, we had to figure out you know, what was the input and output of this model. Um, there were several different options that were already available on the market, but most of them focused around taking an entire patent abstract or an entire patent document as the input. That's great if you want like a quick and simple search. But examiners search for potentially eight hours you know, over and over. And that's why they really love their Boolean search queries, to be able to really dig into the documents, change and manipulate, and have power over what they're searching. So pretty early on, we decided that we wanted to support the full Boolean search syntax as the input to the model um, and be able to score that and rank that against patent documents. So the first step of this, once we knew what type of model we were designing, was to go about a data collection process. So we collected over a million data points from expert human raters that were familiar with patents and combined that with the entire patent corpus of over 170 million patent documents. So that includes things like classification codes. There's 260,000 unique classification codes that describe things like multi-layer semiconductors made out of a specific material. Um, there's hundreds of millions of citations that exist inside of patents. It's a huge corpus, over two terabytes of text content. Um, we were able to process all of this human-rated data as well as the patent data uh, using Google infrastructure um, and turn that into training data to train our models. The models themselves are trained with TPUs. Um, we use TensorFlow and JAX. 
uh, with transformer architectures to train both retrieval and ranking models. Um, and then we moved on to how do we actually productionize this once the models are trained. So this had to be deployed inside of the USPTO's own GCP environment. Um, for their own security, to keep patent applications private, it had to be ATO'd inside of their environment. Um, so our system was sort of an entirely deployable, scalable system that ran on multiple nodes um, inside of their environment. Um, so that was the deployment at scale. Um, and yeah, that was, it was a fun journey to be able to actually go about scaling up and working with USPTO and Accenture to actually um, do the full process of the UI design, the model design, the iteration, and actually see it be used by examiners. I think John will talk a little bit more. Yeah, so what, is, what does this mean? Okay, we're using AI for search now. Uh, one thing I want to note is that the examiner is still in the driver's seat. All of these tools are based off of an examiner's ability to guide the AI towards what they are looking for. And that's very important to us. But I wanted to talk a little bit about how examiners used to search. So way back in the day, before my time, examiners searched through what we call shoes. They're big wooden filing cabinets that had drawers and drawers full of patents. You'd pull out a drawer, go through the patents, put them back, go through another drawer, et cetera, et cetera, on and on. This was a very inefficient way of doing it, but it's the way we had, and we were still able to produce quality patents. But then as information grew and computers got better, we knew we had to introduce something better. So we introduced Boolean search. This was in the 90s. So we had a jump, a huge jump, from looking through shoes, which, by the way, almost forgot, the term shoes supposedly comes from the fact that Thomas Jefferson kept his patent documents in shoe boxes. This is almost assuredly apocryphal and not true, but it's a fun story anyways. So the jump from going from shoes to Boolean search is as big to us as the jump from Boolean search to AI-assisted search is. We know that the amount of information is going to be increasing, and it's not going to stop. We cannot put enough behind Boolean search to really give examiners the tools they need, so we have to augment that, and that is through AI. So with that, uh, we'd, uh, we'd like to thank you for coming, and uh, if we have some time for questions, we can take any questions.